A Different Perspective Recently, in the Houston Chronicle, there was a little aside column in which a rather bizarre comment was made. The article chronicled the comments of a noted figure who had filed for divorce. His remarkable and unconventional reasoning reflected a different perspective about certain historical persons and their life events than this reader had ever heard. The newspaper commentator himself remarked about it being an interesting take on adultery. Here is the quote. Martin Luther King Jr. suffered from infidelity. So did John F. Kennedy. You're more likely to find great leadership coming from a man who likes to have sex with a lot of women than one who's monogamous. Why should this comment stand out to this reader? Given the varied perspectives that invade one's daily life, it would seem rather in line with the way things are nowadays. After all, one hears similar reasoning poured out of pulpits, pews, and power media on a regular basis. Why then did this article capture attention? Could it be that the general public has been so recently deluged with Hollywood perspectives on spiritual matters that this sort of summed up where things were headed? Surely not. Well, maybe. Heaven forbid. Could it be true that this irreverent departure from moral turpitude is evidence of a public gone senseless? Even for one trained in logic and the machinations of reasoning, the portent of so great a slide into mass hypnosis has been evidenced recently by crowds thronging theaters to view the spiritual perspective produced by one group of men seems as ludicrous as public acceptance of one man's perspective on adultery. Nay, a thousand churchmen would rise to condemn the one while accepting the other. To the man of logic, there is no difference. To spiritual man, there is no difference. Both hold four tenets of history for the wrong reason. Believe it or not, Jesus had to deal with similar circumstances at the end of his ministry with the disciples. The churchmen of that period had their own set of perspectives about spiritual matters, regardless of the truth. Jesus stood on the side of truth, while the erosive teaching of the hour went about to manifest itself in actions that would forever seal destiny. His day, his hour, your day. As casual as these words appear in Scripture, they are significant for true perspective. In Luke 17, verse 24, it says, For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in His day. His day is yet to come. It stands in antithesis to the day He was about to face, a day declared as your day and the power of darkness. Luke 22, verse 53 relates, When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. John 8 19 and 20, confronts the Pharisees. You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Your hour and his hour are antithetical. Their hour reflected the power of darkness, which gripped them and carried them to crucify the Lord of glory. His hour was the moment, that precious moment, when his last breath exited him from earth to glory. Your hour brought all the things portrayed in movies and stations and cathedrals. Your hour brought denial from disciples and trials by religious courts. Your hour was a triumph of darkness in the temple. His hour ripped the temple veil forever, founded light into darkness forever, opened graves, robbed hell, triumphed over death, tore the keys from the iron grip of Satan's hand, and rescued the sheep given him by the Father. Your hour portrays the blood and gore of a Roman sentence perjured and bought by silver coins, and crowds of loyalists shouting what they did not construe as destiny for their children and grandchildren. His hour brought an empty tomb, 
loosed the captives and gave freedom to every righteous son of the Most High God. Your hour was full of clamoring and noise. His hour was full of peace and fellowship with his beloveds. Your hour forever set the tenor of established religion. His hour established the kingdom of God. His day is possible because of his hour. John 18 verse 36 declares, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Those of his kingdom hear and obey his voice. Those of the other kingdom, their voices. The definitive difference is whose voice is heard. Perspective had much to do with this spiritual battle in Jesus' life. He taught his disciples the true perspective. Instead of the law on adultery, he spoke of heart adultery. Instead of the letter of the Sabbath, he took authority and declared himself Lord of the Sabbath and established healing and compassion and provision. Perspective has everything to do with the spiritual warfare of this present hour as well. In Jesus' struggle with twisted perspectives, he taught his disciples thusly. John 14, verse 29 And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. John 16, verse 28 I came forth from the Father, and I have come into the world. Again I leave the world and go to the Father. This is what took place at Golgotha. It was a planned exit to home, not just a Roman execution. John 19, verse 11 You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. The scene at Calvary was a head-on collision with Satan and darkness, and woe to those who portray it otherwise. The scene at Calvary was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Woe to those whose perspective differs from this one. Jesus and the temple leaders read from the same book, but from a different perspective. Woe to him whose perspective differs from the Holy Ghost. This concludes A Different Perspective.